Hello, in this video, we'll cover two questions in momentum, but they both involve the idea of rate of mass. So it's a bit challenging. So I would like you to try question 2.45 and also 2.46. Pause the video, try it out, and we'll discuss it together. Two hours later. Okay, so for the first question, if you look at the textbook, then this is the so-called model answer obviously but then I don't like it um, if you remember what I said in the part 1 video uh, the definition of Newton's second law is uh, dp momentum over dt right? and p momentum is m times v obviously and then you can derive the equation of m dv over dt which is ma simply plus v dm over dt all right, and I do think this can give you a more uh, holistic view of what is happening in physics here. So first of all, if you look at dv over dt, and then the question said the speed of velocity is constant, then in this case, you should know it is zero because the change of v is zero uh, when this is constant. And therefore, this whole term is zero. It doesn't really matter what m is now. And then, uh, and this is how you can derive the equation that you might see from the so-called uh, textbook answer here, which is V dm over dt, change of mass over change of time. And this is how you can derive the final equation as in V sigma here. Okay, and then uh, in terms of the number, of course, it uh, doesn't really matter what that is, you can just substitute. So the general equation for this situation uh, will be this one. Okay, the next question, uh, it said there is some sort of sand that has been pouring uh, or graphite pouring on this conveyor belt so the, of course the belt has to be providing force to those new sand or gravel um, in order to keep this moving so there must be some energy goes into the belt as well so for part A1 uh, is asking you the force that is needed in fact, uh, this is the same question as uh, what we have earlier here. So you can go through the same process. Uh, you should still find the answer as V sigma because uh, it is also keeping at a certain rate and also uh, keeping the speed as constant. So you don't have uh, the other term right here. So it will become zero also. So this is how you still get uh, this term. For a2 then you should have uh, the idea of power and if we try to get from a more fundamental sense then we should get uh, energy over time and the energy here is actually the work done so that should be the force integrate uh, with respect to dx and then uh, because of the work done equation force time distance and then uh, dt down below here so what we will have is uh, since F is in fact a uh, constant, so uh, we will have V sigma. Uh, all these are constant, right? So it doesn't really matter a lot. Uh, X over T. So um, then this is simply the answer. Uh, we could have X over T or more precisely DX over DT as v velocity so at the end uh, you will have v square sigma okay so for part a3 is asking you about the rate at which kinetic energy is changing so uh, that means you don't just calculate kinetic energy because kinetic energy is half mv squared but the rate of it whenever you see the word rate of something in physics it simply means it is divided by the change of time all right or you can again take the calculus idea dt uh, more precisely so then uh, what you will have is simply uh, half m over delta t or you may say delta m also v squared and that actually means because uh, delta m over delta t is simply the rate of mass which is provided by the question again sigma V square. So this is the rate of kinetic energy that this graph is gaining.
because uh, when it's dropped here, uh, it there was no energy, right? Imagine like you just pour the sand, the gravel uh, vertically onto the conveyor belt, it will just get stopped. So, um, and afterwards what happened is the conveyor belt start to move and it helped those sand to gain the KE. And so for part B, uh, this is the best part, the most interesting part of this question is, uh, if you look at the difference between the answer in these two parts, you will see they are not the same, right? Because part two is the energy or more precisely the power that you have given in to the conveyor belt. However, the conveyor belt actually only give half of it because you can see the term, right? Both are having a common factor of V square sigma. But then for the KE, that one, again, this is not just KE, but the rate of KE. So the idea is also power. Uh, if you look at the units, it's joule per second. So uh, you can see half of it is somehow gone. So this is, first of all, the observation uh, from the theory itself. The reason is that when you pour this, once again, it will be zero at the beginning. But then uh, we want the sand to reach the so-called constant speed V. But then think about this, you can't do it instantly. There's no way you can do it instantly. Like uh, once you drop this on the bell, it becomes V directly. There's no, no way, simply. So what happened is they would need time to pick up the speed, increasing from zero. Let's say if V is 10, then it has to go from zero, one, two, three, four, five, so on to 10. And that takes time. And that means, if you think about the relative speed between the sand, for example, if the sand is still accelerating, it was uh, just five while the bell is moving at 10, arbitrary unit, then the sand will kind of fall behind and that will slide through uh, if there's any existing sand or the bell itself. Uh, this is how those energy get lost. You may think that, hey, uh, this question looks uh, very unusual, untraditional. Uh, we won't see it in the exam probably, then maybe you don't have to care about it. And well, obviously, if you have seen this sentence on my screen, uh, on the notes here, then you know it is not the case, of course. So for those, if you are interested, if you want to do one more discount question, uh, go to check out this past paper yourself.